Hey guys, it's Dan, your host of your Dan's Reviews, and today I'm back for another video for The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, and in today's we're going to be doing our weekly Q&A leading up to the second episode of the Daryl Dixon series. We're also going to discuss the newest scene in the promo for the this season of Daryl Dixon, where we see a running walker. Alright guys, this one's going to be doing a review today. This one's going to be doing a review for The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon. And in today's we're going to be doing our weekly Q&A video leading up to episode 2 of Daryl Dixon. We're going to be doing this every week now. Every week we're going to go through your comments, your Q&A comments and questions for Daryl Dixon. I might even have a, a chance to do like another one, maybe like Thursday, Friday type of thing before the episode because we are waiting a week now, uh, every week, you know what I mean? Because we're waiting until uh, Sunday for Daryl Dixon now instead of Thursday. So we're going to have a, a lot of days to kind of prep for episode two, get ready for the episode and stuff. So uh, if you want to leave any more Q&A comments and questions, just write Q&A before your comment, post it down below, and I might do another one uh, later on this week. So got some comments from you guys, also got some reactions to the episode, and uh, generally speaking, I think that this was a very enjoyable premiere for a lot of people. I think a lot of people really enjoyed this first episode. I think a lot of people enjoyed it. I mean, I saw a few comments here and there, the people that didn't really like it too much, but for the most part, I think a lot of people enjoyed this episode and um, like me are excited to see what we got next because the promo looks really good. Now, speaking of the preview, let's go into our first topic for today, the running walker. So we've seen this scene in the trailer before where Daryl is captured inside of some sort of settlement and you've got people that are surrounding him watching him and he's about to fight this walker right with like the the dart in him right and he is about to fight this thing and the zombie lunges at him like it runs at him i'm like what like the, one of the most interesting things about this show and i think it's already something that it has against dead city and probably as well the ones who live i mean we'll have to see but i guarantee this spinoff out of any spinoff is about to make the walkers the most interesting since like the early days of The Walking Dead. And I honestly think that might be why I like this spinoff so much already is because it actually is a really good show for zombies. It's actually a scary series for zombies. They're burning you. They're running after you now. And God knows what else they do. I mean, you know, we heard Isabel mention that there's a whole bunch of different kind of zombies that are in France, you know. And I just think that's so cool because they're fully going with the advanced walkers plot now, which obviously I think we could all agree on this. If they want to have 10 more years of the Walking Dead universe or however long they want to keep this franchise going, um, they're going to have to spice it up a bit. You know what I mean? They're going to have to do other things. And I think these burners and these runners and all these things, you know, whatever you want to call these things, these are really what's going to keep the Walking Dead alive. And that's actually what I really like about this spinoff is that with Dead City and I'm sure with the ones who live it's more like character focused and like you know storyline focused with this show right here there are storylines for sure there are plots going on like with Lohan and stuff and getting him to you know wherever he needs to go but it more so just feels like a show that is expanding the the Walking Dead universe and it's showing us different types of zombies that will be a problem probably throughout a lot of these shows you know what I mean and I love it because we're seeing a different you know setting in the Walking Dead we've never seen France before we've never seen that part of the world and we now know that they've actually been struggling I would say even worse than the people in the US at least I would argue because you know if they got runners and if they got burners and stuff that still kill you if the infection gets in you and stuff I mean I think that's just so brilliant to be honest um you know, if you're going to expand a franchise, if you're going to, you know, do this thing and do all these shows, you're, you're going to have to, you know, make your plot very interesting. And I think this show is doing that right now. They're expanding this whole Walker concept. They're making this more scary. They're making it more intense than just your average Walker walking around, you know, because you can't do that for 10 more years. It would get so boring. And I would even argue it, it kind of has gotten boring with the zombies just kind of walking around, you know. So I, I appreciate that Daryl Dixon is going the extra mile with it. And they're making the zombies really scary. They're actually making them like, oh, crap. Like when you see a zombie, you're like, oh, make sure that's not this and make sure it's not that. Like maybe keep your distance. Try to avoid them. You know, like I, I really like that. I think that's a really, really cool kind of um, element, you know, to this uh, series. But yeah, there you go. Uh, so running a walker is going towards Daryl. Daryl will take the walker down for sure. But it's probably going to throw him off when the thing like lunges at him, you know. And um yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. So we have super zombies is I guess what I'm going to call this or like running zombies, uh, you know, in the in the Daryl show now. So we got burners and we got runners is what I will say. 
And then we also probably have another kind or two as well, because Isabella said that there are a, a good few versions of zombies that are different in France. So I'm I'm intrigued. I'm sorry. I'm very intrigued. Um, and I'm very, um, you know, just on edge about it. You know, I think that's the one thing that's really gripping me with this show right now is that I'm like, okay, what other kind of walkers are we going to see? You know what I mean? And I've heard from early reviewers that like, Apparently, the walkers in this show are absolutely insane as you continue these episodes, and I'm I'm already getting that vibe, and we've only seen the first episode, so very, very excited to see that. But anyway, let's get into your Q&A comments and questions for today. First one comes from Thomas, who says that, Dan, I have a little bit of a theory on what's going on with the Walking Dead universe, especially with this Daryl Dixon series. Do you think that Norman Reedus is starting to be slowly set up as the lead of the Walking Dead universe, and after The Ones Who Live airs, and Andrew Lincoln potentially drops the role of Rick Ryan? for good. Uh, do you think that Daryl Dixon slash Norman Reedus will lead this franchise for many more years? Because it seems like Norman Reedus actually wants to continue for a long while while Andrew Lincoln is coming back to conclude his character. So what do you think about that? I think you're absolutely right. I, I absolutely think you're right. And, you know, I, I think I, I should take a second to specify as well, too, because Rick Grimes, if you guys are not aware, if you haven't been following the channel for many years, um, you'll know that Rick Grimes is my all-time favorite entertainment character ever created. He's the character that I connect to the most. Um, I love his character. I love the actor, Andrew Lincoln. I mean, you don't get better. You, you seriously don't. Like, you don't get a better performer than Andrew Lincoln. I'm sorry, but you just don't. Um, that actor is absolutely phenomenal. And it does, and it pains me that he's he's probably done after these next six episodes. But, you know, if there was anybody that could lead the franchise after Andrew Lincoln, if we had no choice, and if Andrew Lincoln really is, you know, saying, like, after these six episodes, I'm done, which is something we have to prepare for. If that's what they're doing, then I'm fine with Daryl. I'm fine with Daryl taking over because, you know, you can't really do Negan because Negan was a villain. Maggie, she's good, but she, I don't find she's lead material. Um, Carol's good, but again, she's like a side character. Daryl, he's led the original series for a few years now. He's done his thing. He ha now has his own spinoff. Um, to me, it's like, if Andrew Lincoln's in the franchise, for God's sakes, let him lead the franchise. I mean, you know, as long as he's still in the franchise, let him lead the franchise. But if Andrew Lincoln is done after 106 of The Ones Who Live, which is very, very likely at this point, um, unless they throw us through a, a swerve, but, you know, pretty much Andrew Lincoln's going to be done after these six episodes. And if that's the case, and if that's what they're doing, then, yeah, Norman Reedus, I would say let him, you know, continue to lead this, right? Because you need someone, and honestly, I think Norman's the only other one that really would work to lead this franchise. So, yeah, if Andrew Lincoln's done, Norman Reedus, I'm fine with that. Um, because I, I love Norman Reedus, and I, I love Daryl's character. Um, not as much as I love Rick's character, obviously, but I, I still enjoy Daryl, and I, I still enjoy what they do with his character. So, I'd be fine with that. You know what I mean? I'd be absolutely fine with that. You need someone to lead, right? If it's not going to be Rick, then, you know... Maybe Daryl's your next uh, best bet, right? And I mean, he's leading his own show pretty damn good already. So I, yeah, I, I think it's uh, it could definitely work um, for sure. Next one comes from Peter who says that, Dan, I got to be honest, this Daryl Dixon pilot was a hell of a lot better than the Dead City pilot, just in my opinion. Um, really enjoyed the setting, really enjoyed the show, very impressed so far, and the characters are great. Um, yes, absolutely. The new characters they added, uh, Isabel, uh, really like her. Uh, uh, Lohan, really like him. He's a fun little kid. Um, you know, I, I saw some flack he got for the, for this episode. I'm, I'm not really sure why. I mean, he's, you know, he's just a kid at the same time. You know what I mean? I got no issues with him yet. I thought he was really good. Um, Codon is a fantastic villain. Really like him. Um, there's Jeanette, the girl on the boat that's in charge of that settlement. I liked her too. She's got a charm to her. I think the actress is really good. Same with Codon. I think they both got a really good charm to them. Um, and then I would say, who else did we get in this episode? Um, Sylvie. Sylvie was good. You know, she was kind of badass with the knife and stuff. She was like stabbing that guy over and over again, you know? And, um, yeah, I think that's about it in terms of like the cast that's like sticking around, right? Um, and then Carol, but we know Carol's going to be in season two. But yeah, no, in terms of the, the overall new characters, I really like them. I think they're all good in their own ways. Um, and uh, in terms of, you know, kind of the rest of the cast, in terms of, you know, that whole thing, I, I think it's really good, you know? Now, in terms of it being better than the Dead City pilot, um, here's the thing. 
I think I favor the Dead City pilot more. I think there's more there for me personally as as a viewer. I think it was more enjoyable. Um, but I think the Daryl Dixon series is objectively better. I actually will say that. I think that, you know, in terms of favoritism, I prefer Dead City. I just had more fun with it. Um, you know what I mean? But in term and plus because he had two characters from The Walking Dead in that one rather than just one. Um and again, Daryl doesn't speak all that much, so it's, you know, it's kind of difficult. But I will say, though I think I, I favor Dead City, I think the Daryl Dixon pilot objectively is a better episode because it furthers the plot of this franchise. It it enhances what we know about the Walkers. It gives us more about, you know, the world. It gives us more of an idea of the apocalypse on the other side of the world, you know. And I think that's the be the best thing about this episode is that it shows you how much, you know, stuff has gone down in France rather than the U.S. Because in the U.S., that's also where Dead City is too, you know what I mean? So we didn't move all that far. With this one, we're actually like, we're a ways out. We're a good ways into, you know, the, the Paris location and stuff. We're really seeing something different. And I think that definitely makes this objectively a better episode, even though I favored the Dead City pilot. Although, I'm not going to lie, I feel like I should put up a poll on the channel. Maybe today or tomorrow I'll uh, low-key do it. And I'll talk about... I'll put Daryl Dixon pilot or Dead City pilot, and I'll let you guys vote. Because honestly, I'm interested to see where, where the percentage is at, to be honest. I really am. Uh, I'm curious, to be honest. So I'll probably do that here in a couple days. And we'll drop two more from Robert and Speaking, who uh, one says, uh, Dan, I did notice that there are test subjects on the boat. So maybe uh, that is making it kind of confirmed that the boat group at the end with Jeanette is a CRM uh, outpost or connection in some kind of way because they have test subjects. Also, Dan, I uh, got a question for you. Since they mentioned that there were prisoners with an S, do you think it's possible that Carol was actually on the boat with Daryl? And she got on the boat and she ended up uh, somewhere in and around France or maybe somewhere nearby, you know, Spain or something like that. Do you think Carol is in the nearby area? Um, I think they're going to pull a twist like that. Yeah, I, I think they're going to pull a twist like that, to be honest, because it doesn't really make sense how Carol gets all the way to France if she takes her own little journey. I think that would be a little bit convenient that she would find out exactly where Daryl is, you know. And from what I've seen, she has his bike and she has all this stuff. So definitely I think that Carol was part of this this shipping container or whatever group. Um, I think that they will reveal in the flashbacks that Carol was on board, but Daryl couldn't get to her. And she managed to escape herself because it's Carol, but they ended up in different locations and then over time they found each other and then that's how that uh, came to be. So I think Carol is also on the other side of the world. We just don't know it yet. I feel like Carol probably found Daryl's bike. She probably found out that he got taken and at that moment she was probably like, okay, well I'm going to you know, follow the tracks and she probably uh, ran into you know, the same group. They probably put her on a boat. And went down that way and then something happened. That's the only way I can see it. Because, again, Carol being in France is very convenient for the plot. So I'm, I'm definitely curious to see how they explain it. Um, not to mention, you know, realism-wise, yeah. You know, it would make more sense than why she was on that, that boat to begin with. And them two just got separated, you know. That's definitely possible, you know. And here's the thing. Yeah, he told Isabel that he was on his own. But for all we know, I mean, here's the thing. Daryl may not want to reveal Carol right away, you know what I mean? We know what Carol means to him, so maybe he doesn't want to reveal that there are more people with him like Carol, you know what I mean? Because then, you know, he doesn't know who he can trust, you know, he don't know uh, Isabel all that well yet, so it makes sense. I could definitely see a twist where Carol was on that boat as well. Yeah, I could definitely see it. Um, and Carol would escape too. I mean, Carol, Carol's a savage. So yeah, Carol would make it out of there for sure. Um, and then in terms of the, uh, you know, the, the whole kind of like, I think in terms of the, the variants and, uh, the walkers and the test subjects on the boat, I mean, test subjects for some reason, it just seems to be like a thing in the walking dead universe. Like Padre had test subjects for some unknown reason. CRM had test subjects. I mean, I think Commonwealth even had minor things going on. Like, yeah, no, I, I think that doesn't really speak in terms of like if that's CRM connected or not. Um, but definitely test subjects. It seems to be like a big thing in the franchise. So I don't think that confirms that this boat group is necessarily connected to CRM. Although it would make sense if they were. Because again, I'm, I'm really fascinated to know how they had the fuel to get from, you know, <laughs> uh, US to, you know, uh, uh, France, right? And I, I definitely, I find that part interesting. So anyway. 
Thank you uh, so much for watching, guys. Let me know in the comment section below what are your guys' expectations for the Daryl Dixon second episode. Also, if you want to do another Q&A on the channel, we'll probably do another one on Thursday or Friday. So leave some comments down below. I'll make sure to get another one done. And uh, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And of course, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, make sure, uh, make sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos of The Walking Dead. Make sure to follow me on Dan's The Walking Dead Reviews on Instagram, guys. And of course, I'll see you guys very soon for more videos of The Walking Dead. Daryl Dixon. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. And peace out.